Hi guys, Nick's user here. So, what do I have for you today? Not so much a distro review. Uh, I am going to look at some um, Open Indiana. So, there's been a new release of uh, Open Indiana Hipster. So, uh, what I can do is just take you to uh, Firefox and uh, take a quick look over at uh, Distro Watch. We'll just go there quickly now. Now, this is probably a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not sure whether it's going to uh, to come up on here. But uh, Open Indiana is uh, one of my oh, I wouldn't say favourites because I don't use it on a day to day basis. But it is um, it is an important distribution for me uh, in that uh, I used to be a, a bit of an Open Solaris fan. So you can see that coming up here, and uh, there's been a new release. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Not really showing it. Oh yes, they are here. So that was on the third of the fifth. So it was a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Now, typically when I've done these uh, sorts of uh, videos on uh, Open Indiana or Open Solaris, I've focused on maybe trying to just get the desktop to work. Um, but you know, in all fairness, that's not really what Solaris is for or SunOS is for. Um, so what I've done is I've set it up as a file server. So I've set up two file services. One is um, the export, which we typically do on a GNU plus Linux system if we want to mount via NFS. Um, and I've set it up with NFS4, I believe it is. And I've also set up an FTP um, using per FTPD. Okay, so that's probably the simple part actually, is um, setting up per FTPD. Um, now, I do have this link here, but this link is now invalid. So, um, because my IP has changed on the virtual machine. I'm actually running this in a virtual machine, um, this uh, Solaris instance. And the reason why I'm not going to run through the boot is it's actually quite slow. We're looking at, a, I think, now let me just take a look at my phone here. But I looked at it, yes, it was about 3 minutes and 45 seconds to go from post to fully booted. Okay, so yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into... 203, just the... Uh. Now, of course, I need to put the FTP there. Okay. Now, it's not going to allow me to go up to a high level because I've cherooted it, okay? And that's one of the important features when you're doing an FTP server is you need to cheroot. Now, I'm not using secure FTP here, but yeah, you can uh, see that I can't actually go up to a high level. It's best if you use secure FTP because you're actually... Uh, encrypting the, um, uh, I guess, the bitstream. You're basically encrypting the bitstream as it uh, as it travels. So uh, we have my file. This is just a test file in here, and that's not really the interesting side of things. So without any further ado, what I'll actually do is I'll take you into the Solaris machine. So let's just go into SSH. In fact, let's let's actually while we're at it, see if we can log in via root. So SSH root at 192.168.0.203, which is what my um, my virtual machine is sitting on at the moment. I'm using KVM to give you a bit of an idea. I about the boot time. I suppose I should refer back and say I don't have VTD available on this machine. Uh, what I have at the moment is I've got an Intel 4770K, and unfortunately, in the earlier K series, they didn't include that extension for virtualization that allows for IOMMU. So unfortunately, my virtual machines may be just a touch slower than your typical virtual machine because they don't have direct hardware access in the sense that uh, VTD would provide or IOMMU. So let's just go into and uh, have a bit of a tr try and get into here. So I am actually going to put in the correct password, no dodginess there, and it just asks for the password. I realize at this point the password's not correct. I press Control D to try and get out of it, and you can see it's still asking for the password. I'll try again. And it's not going to work. I'm just going to get out of there. And it didn't work. So what we're going to do is instead... Okay. Okay. Now, by the way, Bob, you just saw me get rid of that word. The way to do that in Bash, just to let you know, is to go into a kind of Vim mode. You press Escape. Okay. And then you can go into a kind of like a Vim mode and, uh, and you can be able to delete words, whole words. That's a new trick. I've known it for a while, but I haven't mentioned it on uh, on my channels before. I learned that actually in ZF, uh, Zed Shell, sorry, in Zed Shell. So let's go without any further ado. Let's go into um, the actual account that I can log into. 
Okay, so I've got a password to enter there. And you can see here the Illumos project, and it's got some detail there. Okay, so if I go into uh, CD um, export OpenFS, okay, I've got a couple of files in there, one that I've put um, from a previous upload, and just a random file in there. I think if I just go uh, cat file, okay, this is a test NFS file as opposed to the FTP, the pro FTPD file that I'd put in there before as a demo. So, the next thing to do is, you can see I'm actually am running the virtual machine in um, in KVM. I suppose what it might be, what might be worth um, pointing out at this, uh, you know, doing at this point, is actually just showing you uh, in Versh what's going on. So if I go to and we'll, I need to use the root user account. I've got the password wrong now. I'll just do that again. Okay. So if I go Versh, okay, and if I go list. I can see here that I've got a Windows 10 virtual machine, which I'm not really using that frequently, to be honest. Um, it's quite slow on in KVM. I, I, I really do need that VTD to do the GPU pass-through, but I haven't got that enabled, so that's not going to happen. Um, and I've got uh, Open Indiana, which actually is given a Versh ID because it's actually in the running state, as opposed to the Windows 10 machine, which is not in the running state. So we can get out of there. Okay, next step, okay, is I'm going to actually mount using NFS. Now, fortunately, mount is smart enough on GNU plus Linux that it's going to know what I'm trying, exactly what I'm trying to do here, what type of file system I'm going to be trying to mount. So I don't need to really give the T options and all that sort of stuff. Um, but let's uh, let's go through it and go mount uh, now. What do I need to do? 192.168.0.203. Now I can show you the setup on Solaris for um, for the export another time. But I just wanted to demo this to you today that you can actually use it for a reasonable purpose. So let's um, now we're going to do export. Okay, and we're going to mount it on slash mount slash hd zero. Okay, now it's done that, okay? And in fact, we can just go mount, okay, and go grab FS, and we can see that we've got this guy mounted at the moment. Okay, fantastic. Right, so ne next, uh, what we need to do is we need to see that we can actually use it. So, um, let's have a look. Okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna log out of this, um, the, the Solaris box, so yep. And in fact, I'm going to go in as my normal user on Debian. Okay. And I'm going to go. Okay. We can see we've got the two files there. Okay. Now to, the, the point here as well is that I've made it so that any user who uses NFS on this particular directory uh, can modify it. So if I go touch file two, Okay, it's going to have no problem. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with a delay, and then finally it's going to fail after maybe a minute or so, maybe half a minute, minute. Uh, it's going to fail because you don't actually have right permissions to the directory. But we can see here, that'll do. Okay, and I've put the file there, um, file two. So, the next uh, the next step, okay, and by the way, I shouldn't really have um, file as an executable, this, this guy here. That was because I did a recursive change of um, uh, mod, uh, bits before, so changing the permissions. But uh, what I wanted to show to you is that you can actually uh, use this as a reasonable uh, file server. And I can go MPV and do that. And we're going to be able to see the video. And it's fairly responsive, even though it's running on the virtual machine, it's, it's fairly responsive. So um, guys, that was just a bit of a demo demonstration that um, the current uh, Open Indiana is a working distribution. You can use it for the use case that it's intended for, and that's file serving, um, you know, FTP. You could use a HTTPD on there, so web, a web server. Uh, you could do, do it for that. It seems to be fairly responsive. I'm not happy with the boot times. I don't know if that's because of a VTD issue, IOMMU, and I just don't have he direct hardware access and, and boot time for some reason is a little slow because of it. I don't really know the backbone of that, the background, but um, nonetheless, it is a fairly responsive system. So. Uh, that's pretty much I'm going to leave it guys uh, just there. Uh, if you like this video, please press the like button there. If you'd like to receive more of this content, press the subscribe button. I look forward to seeing your comments below. Bye now guys.